Anyways, this conference will now be recorded. Uh, we were discussing on uh, the part of uh, bands. Bandwidth. And third thing is frames. Okay. So uh, now we will discuss something on the OFDMA. Let's see. OFDMA stands for orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. DMS stands for orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. Basically, what happens is uh, we have uh, so we have uh, the base station. And we have a mobile. So what happens is So, uh, so a bandwidth of 20 megahertz comes to us, right? Bandwidth of 20 megahertz comes. So these signals are actually combo of some subcarriers. The subcarriers mix with each other. Right? This mixing technique is called as OFDMA. So they mix, okay, it's very simple. They mix in such a way, okay, such that actually one subcarrier uh, bandwidth is fifteen kilohertz. So one subcarrier bandwidth is uh, fifteen kilohertz. So basically, what we have is, so we have one subcarrier. So this subcarrier will try to mix with other subcarrier at a phase difference of orthogonality. Orthogonality means ortho means one by reciprocal, one by fifteen kilohertz. Is nothing but at a gap of zero point six six seven. So this gap we get it from 1 by 15 kilohertz. So this mixing is called as OFDM. Okay, this mixing is called as OFDM. So in one statement what I can give you is in a single statement. OFDMA is a technique okay. is a technique where subcarriers are multiplexed at a phase difference. Or phase different phase is nothing but time. Time difference of okay. orthogonal orthogonal is orthogonal to Subcarrier bandwidth. Where subcarrier is a multiplex 
has a time difference of four thousand. Half the subcarrier is bad. So one by fifteen is nothing but zero point six six seven milliseconds. Correct. So here TMA is a technique where subcarriers are multiplexed at a time difference. Time difference is nothing but R to the log to the subcarrier. So now what we have is. OFDM is a technique where subcarriers mix with each other. At an six six seven milliseconds. Yes. Point six six seven. Zero point six six seven milliseconds. Sorry, six six seven. So now this is OFDM. That's it. Nothing else. Now when I come to SCFDM. This is single carrier. Frequency division. Multiple axis. Okay. So this is a single carrier. Frequency division. Multiple. So in single carrier frequency division multiple axis. So basically what we have is instead of multiple carrier grouping, okay, we have a single carriers. So single carriers means, so for example, okay, so I have uh, so this is the mobile, so this is the base station. So if some bandwidth is there. So 20 megahertz of bandwidth is there. So here we have a single carrier. Means one one carrier only. So it's a single carrier frequency division. So now here the concept about the single carrier is okay. Basically, what happens is so here you if you see. Okay, what is one subcarrier bandwidth? Fifteen kilohertz, right? So we have a grouping of fifteen, fifteen. So ultimately, this grouping will form big bandwidth, right? The fact of the system is, okay, even even this fifteen kilohertz also has minute carriers that we are not taking into account. Getting a point. Even 15 kilohertz is also a bandwidth, which also have a bandwidth. We we should. So here in the same way, okay. Uh, when I take 20 megahertz, so here I'll make it up to small small carriers 20 megahertz. So here I'll say whole 20 megahertz is one single carrier. So it does not mean that it don't have a small uh, photons. We have a lot of photons inside it. Okay, but the consideration is we do not do any multiplexing or not means orthogonality, nothing that those kind of thing. We consider everything as one combo carrier. Even though we have minute the frequencies inside it, we do not separately take it. But here we separately try to overlap some combos onto each other. Okay, means small small combos we will try to overlap at some orthogonality in OFDM. But here, even though we have small small combos, okay, small small minute particles which are called as photons, which are oscillating or which have some frequency, we do not consider all of them, and we say that everything is oscillating, even though we do not 
combine them specifically, we say it as a single carrier. Even though they are going oscillating. Okay, so now uh, here in SCFDMA, we do not have the concept of any mixing. So we simply say this single carrier and this single carrier is called as so single carrier frequency diffusion multiple axis. Single carrier frequency division multiple axis. Why you are we are using different code of sound so in a, this is SCFDM, it's a single carrier. Whereas in OFDMA, it is a multi-carrier. This is OFDMA. This is OFDMA and this is SCFDMA. SCFDMA is a single carrier. Give me a minute.
So out of this, so basically what we have is this is SCFDM and the OFDM. So now if I take a base station, we have a mobile, we are downlink and we are uplink. In downlink we are using in uplink we are using okay even though both are same okay so even though uh, both are same both are same means what I can say is so if I take this is a time slot for example this is one subway So this you say it as SCFDM, uplink frame. This is one more frame, which is a DL frame, downlink frame. So now in uplink, what is happening is we use a single carrier. In downlink, what we are using is we are using a multiple carriers okay so presuming this is 20 megahertz of bandwidth okay presuming this is also 20 megahertz of bandwidth so we have 20 megahertz of bandwidth in uplink also we are using a single carrier in downlink also we are using a single So after this what we do is okay. So after this what we do is so we have an SCFDM uplink. SCFDM sorry, this is OFDM, right? Okay, so this is OFDM. So this is the basic actual figure. So now, uh, so combo of 15 carriers means a combo of in a slot uh, 12 sub carriers. Okay. So each sub carrier is how much width? 15 kilohertz, right? So 12 into 15 kilohertz is how much? 180 kilohertz. So in 180 kilohertz, so in this gap of 180 kilohertz, this combo of 180 kilohertz. So this 180 kilohertz combo, we call it as one RB, right? 12 sub carriers is nothing but one RB. So always remember in uplink also, even though we do not have a concept of subcarriers, but still 180 kilohertz in a slot. 180 kilohertz is called as one RB. So that means in uplink, 180 kilohertz is also called as one RB. In downlink, also 180 kHz is called as 1RB, but the concept is we have 12 extra subcarriers, we do not have a concept of subcarriers. But this RB part is same, we consider the RB part is same. That means if you have, in uplink we have imagine 100 RBs. Downlink also we have 100. In uplink also 100 RBs, downlink also 100 RBs. Okay, but when you come to throughput, okay, when you come to speed, throughput will dip. Throughput will dip. Okay, throughput will dip means. Okay, so what I can say is throughput will. 
So throughput will dip means throughput is 100 Mbps here and 50 Mbps here. But same number of RBs. Question is why? Okay. So I'll uh, we will discuss more on this part when discussing the modulation and discuss a lot on that. Okay. So and okay. So this is the main major part. So now so this RB wise they are same. Okay, a lot of people have this confusion. RB wise they are same, but subcarriers wise they are different. We do not have the concept of subcarrier. It's a single carrier. Okay, so it's all a single carrier. Now RB is also considered as some single carrier, while bandwidth is also considered as a single carrier. Now what happens is now the problem is okay because we are manually trying to mix multiple subcarriers, right? You know, FDM. So, because of this, okay, because of this mixing, there's a power fluctuations. What is that? There's a power fluctuation. So, now, they sometimes it is very high power. Sometimes it is very low power, right? The power will be fluctuating you heavily. So let us take an average value of the power. I'll take an average value. Average may be coming somewhere here. So this is maximum power. This is the minimum power. Power consumption, okay? This is the average power. So now, sometimes it is very high, sometimes low, sometimes, okay, it is all fluctuating. So this difference, okay, okay, so now in the same way, if I take the single carrier, SCFDFA, in single carrier, we have a single carrier, right, we do not have a concept of these fluctuations, no power fluctuations. So minimum value is sometimes here. Very rarely, maximum is here, maximum power. So when you take an average, average will be somewhere here only. Because most of time it is high only, right? Somewhere here. So this is the average power. If you take the signal's power, average power is somewhere there. Minimum is somewhere here and max is somewhere here. Okay. So now <coughs> if you see this fluctuations, okay, because of this high fluctuation, okay, if there are high fluctuations, so power consumption will be more. Because of high power okay, because of power fluctuations, high power fluctuations. So more power consumption. In uh, FDMA. Whereas in SFDMA, it's little lower. So now, so in OFTMA, so we have a very high, uh, we, are, we are having high power fluctuation. When we have this high power fluctuations, okay, so we have high power fluctuations, so more power is consumed. Here, less power consumption. So why more uh, power consumption here? Because of high fluctuation. So high power fluctuations we can also say, okay, so what is this maximum power? Maximum power again also call it as peak power, right? So maximum power is also called as peak power. So 
So now, what happens is this peak power to average power difference is high, little high. Okay, so peak power to because of fluctuations, sometimes it is very high, sometimes it is very low. So that because of that reason, peak power to average power. Okay, peak power to average power difference is high. Here, peak power to average power difference is low. Okay, so peak peak power to average power difference is high, and peak power to average power difference is low. So this is called as par. This is called as par. So par means peak to average ratio. So par is high. Power is low, right? So peak power to average power fluctuations are more in now FTMA, so it is high. Power is high. Peak to average power is high. Sometimes peak is very high, so average is coming down. That's what. Somebody. Peak power to average power means power. Peak to average ratio is high. Here, peak to average ratio is low. So that means par is low, par is high. So because of this par being high, so for that reason we have three means fluctuations. So ultimately more power consumption. So whereas par is low, ultimately low power. Consumption. Okay, power is low, so low power consumption. Power is high, so high power consumption. Okay, so this is what we have it. So any questions here? Same thing, right? Peak to average ratio. This conference will now be recorded. To average power ratio. Same, right? We actually call it as par. So whatever the spelling is. R is low in uh, because of low power. So now basically the problem is, is it UE's battery? So as UE has low battery, most of the 90% of the consumption of the battery is in uplink. Okay, battery 90% of the battery is consumed in uplink. So in uplink, if you are sending little low power, so ultimately battery will not be drained fastly. So what you can say is you can save the battery power. So whereas here, okay, so 90% of it is battery is draining, so it's not draining. So 90% of the battery. Consumption.
question in one point two four three methods power consumption. How is this conference will now be recorded? Uh, 1.43 megahertz also power consumption always so that is bandwidth part okay there's a question question is so anyways this is how the SCFDM and OFDM is working so basically the concept of RBs are same okay so I'll come back on that the concept of RBs are same, same number of RBs, okay. But the gap is between the gap is due to the throughput. The throughput gap is there, but okay. And uh, power gap is there, so you can save more battery here. Save more battery here. Anywhere we don't have a power problem because power is supplied by. Okay. Is a diesel generator or AC circuit? Okay, E node based power you will get it from direct uh, current authority. So, you know, okay, so now I'm coming on to the point. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to make the difference. The problem in uh, OFDMA is okay, so SCFDMA and OFDMA. Uh, UE will consume more power when we are downloading. UE will consume more power when we are downloading something. Uh, actually, UE is receiving, right? It will not uh, affect much. But if you are transmitting, it will have a more effect. So, generally, 80 to 90 percent of the battery consumption is while uploading. While downloading, you do not have much consumption because it's a receiver receives the uh, data so see for example you are receiving something that's fine so if you're transmitting something you have to transmit from your mobile to antenna tower maybe one kilometer far so you have to push the signal so far you have to transmit so so now when we have an SCFDM and an OFDM in uh, okay so the problem with SCFDM and OFDM is so basic is here low power, high power, second one is low throughput, high throughput. Third one is uh, it takes less less power consumption. Saves UE battery. High power consumption. Okay, so it takes high power consumption. The most important part is highly prone to interference and losses. and losses are low power high power low throughput high throughput less power consumption high power consumption saves you see battery and high prone to interference and losses Whereas interference and losses are less inside OFDM. 
So because of this low, less interference and losses, we have high product. Because of high, high interference and losses, we have Okay. And, uh, and uh, we have low modulation here. Here, high modulation. Okay. So, these are the basic differences between SCFDMA and OFDMA. So, what I can see is, in OFDMA, we have a lot of... Uh, carriers getting mixed. So for that reason, it is very uh, rarely prone to this interferences. Interferences means, in other words, you can say SNR, signal to noise ratio. Means SNR is good and uh, uh, DMA, means you do not have a problem with SNR. Here we have a, always a problem with SNR. And we have a high UL blur. Okay, here we have little load dl blur is low so when you use fdma blur you can, you can say snr and blur are good snr and blur are little bad means interference and losses are nothing but snr and blur okay snr is nothing but signal to noise ratio blur is block error rate so these are the basic differences we are using multiple subscribers at the time we need more interference. We have less interference, right? In a proactive way, we use more, more subcarriers. See, a single carrier is mostly prone to direct interference. If you have multiple carriers which are mixed together, so if some specific carrier comes also, it will not try to interfere. So, for example, I'm modulating. Uh, yeah, no, no, not about modulation. Modulation is a separate thing. For example, I, uh, best example I can say is if uh, something, okay, uh, if some green color is there, you have painted your building with some green color, okay, so it's very green color, or you have painted your whole building with a white color, a single color. Somebody throws you, or you wear a white shirt, okay, somebody throws a color on your shirt. So, if it is a single color, a white color shirt, somebody throws an ink on your shirt, what will happen? It is very clearly visible, right? A single carrier's interference is very high, okay? So whereas if you use a multicolored shirt, okay, a lot of colors are there. If somebody throws an ink bottle on you, so it is there, but it is not as much as a white color shirt, right? So, uh, so it is something like that. A single carrier will have a higher interference, whereas multi-grouped carriers which are mixed may not have so much of interference. Right. Fine. So these are the basic differences. Okay. So but the first difference is low and high power, which is saving battery. Okay. So this is the major uh, difference what you have to understand. Others are anyways, it's fine. Okay. So this is how it is working out. Any questions? In SCFDMA, it saves the UE battery. But in OFDMA, uh, it's going downloading. So it will be... See, the concept... Save more, more battery as compared to SCFDMA. See, the problem is, okay, actually OFDMA takes more power to transmit. Correct. Yes, e -node B. E -node. So, E node B do not have any power problem, right? So, but SCFDMA will take low power to transmit. So, UE always have a power problem. Your battery will be drained. Correct. So, for that reason, we are using SCFDMA for transmitting coupling. Okay. And for transmitting from E node B, which we call it as downlink, we are using uh, OFDMA. Now, when it comes to UE, UE is not transmitting OFDM and uh, SCFDM. It is receiving OFDM. As it is receiving it, it will not do more power consumption. But for transmission only, okay, 
So for example, if you talk, your energy is lost. If you hear, your energy is not lost, right? Something like that.
ओके सो दिस इज हाउ वी हैव सीएफटीएम एंड एफटीएम सिंपल लॉजिक देयर इज नथिंग टू बी वरीड एंड and this is a very common question which is asked in it uh, it is a question what is asked with uh, this part in oftm and can you tell me the difference generally people will tell on the power part you can tell one extra thing that is we have more uh, high input frequency in the cpu and then oftm so which will reduce its modulation and in fact reduce its throughput so that is one extra thing you can add and say so which will be an added advantage okay so apart from this so uh, we have uh, so we have seen the uh, the next part is modulation so i do not want to actually explain this technique modulation modulation you know it modulation is a technique which uh, will try to overcome losses and uh, send the signal for a longer distances so, what you can say is for example if we have a base station or a ue or any signal actually we have a base band very low frequency signal so this low frequency signal if i transmit it it will prone to high losses so for avoiding these losses what we are trying to do is the same base band signal we are trying to mix it with a very high frequency signal and we are sending it okay actually we have a base band signal is actually the data comes in a very low frequency signal which is a base band signal okay so we will try to mix this base band signal with a very high frequency signal and we send it such that okay low losses takes place so this conversion of of base band signal the technique of conversion of base band signal to okay which is a low frequency signal okay to carrier which is a high frequency signal is called as modulation simple means a low a low frequency base band signal is this this low frequency base band signal this is a low frequency base band signal this low frequency is a base band signal we are trying to mix it with a high frequency carrier and we are transferring it so as we are transferring a low frequency base band signal mixing it with a low frequency to a high frequency Okay, so conversion of base band to a carrier is called as modulation. So this modulation, basically, when we use an LTE, 
basically uh, if you take 2G so every every technology should have this techniques okay when you take 2G 3G and 4G if I take 2G we have a modulation which we call as GMSK in 3G we have a modulation we use either GMSK In 3G, we use a modulation that is called as QPSK. Okay. So, whereas in 4G, we use a modulation which is called as either we use QPSK or 16 QAM or 64 QAM. Generally, in every days, so this is what we have the modulation. So, GMS case the Gaussian minimum shift key. Okay, QPS case. Feature phase shift key quam means quadrature amplitude modulation. to say is we have GMSK, Gaussian minimum shift key, we have QPSK, quadrature phase shift key, and we have QAM, uh, quadrature amplitude modulation. So now, okay, so now uh, I will not talk on all these things, okay, I will talk on LTE. In LTE, we have a base station in OB. We have a UE. So, downlink and uplink. In downlink, maximum we are using is 256 gram. Max. Minimum is QPSK. In uplink, max is 64 gram. And minimum modulation technique is so when you have 64 gram okay UL throughput is good when you have 256 gram DL throughput is good When you have QPSK, okay, high losses, during high losses we use it and we will get low throughput, we will get low speed, okay, so here also high losses. So here low losses. Okay. So whenever the losses are low, we use 256 gram and DL throughput is good. Whenever high losses, we use QPSK and throughput is in uplink also. So when you have low losses, okay. So we have losses your throughput is good and we have high losses okay so we have to discuss more on this okay
okay that part i'll discuss tomorrow okay so we have further uh, exactly like how in, in which in which modulation how many effects go was it all that we can discuss right now okay so maybe that we'll discuss tomorrow i'll end for today so tomorrow you have practicals so uh, i'll just message you the practical timings you can attend the practicals at the time whatever it is assigned to you so thank you